Hi guys, I'm Michaela. And I'm Shannon, and this is the Waves of Change podcast, where we're going to be talking about the environment and how we need to protect our local ocean ecosystems. So, let's start talking about the giant plastic island. The Oh wait, the giant plastic island in the Caribbean? There's also one in between Hawaii and California so terrible there's i think there's like seven or eight places where like trash just collects based on like the ocean currents and Uh, so one's in the caribbean and then there's one in between hawaii and california that's terrible it's so sad it needs there needs to be a big change because needs to be a wave of change there needs to be a wave of change (laughs) because this is so unacceptable that this keeps happening and that people are just so haphazardly tossing their litter and trash into the ocean, into the sidewalk. Everything that goes on the street or like on the sidewalk is going to end up in the ocean, which I feel like mm-hmm. people don't get. And it's just so important. Yeah, when we were talking to Rick Erkneff er- er- from, from Surfrider, from Surfrider mm-hmm. he was talking about how like just plastic pollution is one of their biggest initiatives because it is such a huge problem so here's that quote from rick really quickly we also have other programs um that deal with plastic pollution that's a huge um huge issue globally as i'm sure you're all aware of the amount of plastic that's in the ocean um is is, you know just basically a hazard for the the food web and life cycles of the ocean so we work tirelessly um uh, on plastic pollution so that was just Rick from Surfrider talking about the importance of addressing plastic pollution. And there have been a lot of articles looking at this issue recently. There was a recent BBC article just talking about how there's anywhere between 8 to 10 million tons of trash just floating. And that's only in the Pacific patch. That's not even in the other ocean patches. So it's a huge issue. And there was that whale that just washed up. A baby whale filled with like 60 to 80 pounds of trash. Yeah, and then there was also this other Forbes article that I saw recently where they're talking about the fact that there's estimated to be 51 trillion microplastic particles in our ocean, which are being ingested by fish, whales, dolphins, yeah, we talked, marine birds, everything. Yeah, we talked with Jefferson Wagner, also known as Zuma J, the mayor pro tem of Malibu. So here's his quote on that. So in the city of Malibu, we've banned all kinds of plastic utensils, plastic straws, foam packaging, sandbags, everything that might wind its way up into the water and become part of the plastic morass of the future. So when your kids are eating fish, they'll probably have plastic inside of whatever they're eating. It's just so insane to me that some people don't get that this is a big issue. Luckily, there are a lot of coastal cities that are making change and are doing a lot of big things. Like yes, Malibu's plastic ban that's going into effect June 1st. I, foam too. Yes, statewide um, one-use plastic bags are banned, mm-hmm. which is amazing. It's really cool that a lot of celebrities are kind of putting their their entire reputation behind some of these causes. Like, Young the Giant came out with Heal the Bay and played during one of their beach cleanups, which is so cool. Like, bands are coming out, artists are coming, trying to do things that are going to make a difference, yeah, which is really when, cool. when we were talking to Talia from Heal the Bay, mm-hmm. she was telling us about their upcoming gala on May 17th mm-hmm. and just about all the people they're honoring there, and they're honoring Zoe Deschanel. Yes, and her husband, Jacob Pechenet. And we're recognizing Zoe and Jacob because of their work, Um, in the sustainability sector, but also because they've done a lot of um, media around plastic pollution, and they've really gotten the word out um, with a younger base. Yeah, and they're also honoring L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti. Mm -hmm. So they have a great mix of, like, politicians who are the people actually passing these legislations and new bills, but they're also honoring these celebrities who are out there on social media and at Beach Clean cleanups and really working to get their fan bases involved yeah and zuma J was talking about how leonardo dicaprio just donated fifty thousand dollars to rebuild a cage for mm-hmm. sea lions and it was so interesting to see and hear rick's uh rick Erkineff's take on that and how it is difficult to measure these efforts being put forth by celebrities like leonardo dicaprio and 
while it's easy to put like a price tag on, oh, he just donated $50,000, it's harder to see like who that's impacting. Yeah, no, it definitely is. It's like, it's very cool though to see, I mean, Rick was talking about Ted Danson and how he came out to, from Cheers, he came out to the no new offshore oil drilling, the rally they had in Laguna Beach in February. And he was the one who started Oceana, which is like a whole foundation a dedicated foundation. to protecting the local coastal ecosystems and the ocean. And then he also talked about Jack Johnson and how oh, Jack yeah. Johnson was an original like surf rider member, was so involved, and now all of his concerts are he makes sure he leaves the smallest like ecological footprint he can because he cares so much about the ocean and the environment. Yeah, one of my favorite things that Rick touched on is just the authenticity that these celebrities need to have now because it is so easy to discredit people when they're not being genuine and so it was a quote about like if you're going to walk the walk you have to talk the talk mm-hmm. and we can play that quote that in this day and age to be a celebrity and to to speak on something and to have a platform you better know and and be able to really walk the walk and talk the talk you can't just come to the conversation and say something otherwise you know um it, there's just too many ways to discredit it's really cool also talia was telling us when we were talking to her at heel the bay she was talking to us about how a lot of celebrities are reaching out and influencers to their organization wanting to make an impact virtually through social media which mm-hmm. is really cool to see um, Tali was telling us about that girl who on social media saw that the beach cleanup was happening in January and she took a Greyhound bus from Colorado. Yeah, because she cared so much about oceans but didn't have beaches near her to help at. So she quite literally drove all night so that she could be at the beach cleanup. And that was something that Rick mentioned was that with social media now you can boost posts and you can put out promoted information. And so you're getting these analytic now and you can measure these metrics and it makes it easier for you to kind of see the impact of what you're putting out there yeah no definitely it's just very interesting as rick was saying it's so hard to quantify really the direct result of celebrity endorsements so it's just it's really interesting trying to figure out if it does have a positive effect effect or a negative effect like there's no real way to quantify it Mm -hmm. there's always going to be an upside and a downside which is so interesting because you would think that it would have a final kind of answer i think it definitely depends on like the product that they're endorsing Mm -hmm. or the organization that they're endorsing because you see like things go so wrong like if you look at the coney 2012 example like so many people and so many public figures got behind that really quickly because they thought it was a good genuine organization for them to get behind and then it ended up being fairly fraudulent when looked deeper into and so I think Talia from Heal the Bay kind of mentioned that how not only are celebrities now doing a lot of vetting of the companies and organizations they get behind but these organizations are also vetting the celebrities they want to make sure that the person whose face they're putting on their company is genuine and they're authentic and they really care about the cause rather than having a cause to put beside their name. I think that's so important, especially with celebrities and, like, when they are getting behind causes like this. Like, they need to make sure, like, as Rick said, like, if you're going to talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. And I think kind of going off of that, Zuma J touched on that a lot about how our generation are the ones that really have to kind of fix what, in his words, like, his generation broke. Mm -hmm. And he said that it's important to see young people out there covering these stories and at these rallies and at these beach cleanups because sadly, I mean, sadly or not sadly, depending on how you look at it, we're the ones that kind of are going to fix this and we're the ones that have to fix. It's something I really think people need to start becoming more aware of and celebrities can get behind whatever causes they want to get behind. But at the end of the day, we also need to individually get involved for it to make an impact. Yeah. And I definitely agree. And I think that's kind of just what telling these stories is about and making these podcasts just kind of getting these messages out so that the general public is just becoming more aware. So on that note, we are going to wrap it up and thank you for listening to Waves of Change. Thank you so much. Be sure to tune in next week and we hope you take a look at our article and our package.